On any given day, an average person sends or receives 41.5 text messages, 110 emails, receives 8 mobile phone calls, and visits 94 websites, unknowingly leaving electronic traces through mobile devices, credit cards, and laptops. Servers, smartphones, and computers have accumulated troves of information about us, giving law enforcement officials and private companies access to an unprecedented amount of data. But is this data being protected? For years, there have been laws that protect us from unwarranted government surveillance and invasion of our privacy. A right to privacy stems from the Bill of Rights, which states that people have the right to be secure on their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, unless there is probable cause, meaning law enforcement has a reasonable case to invade your privacy. Back then, your privacy constituted a physical space and objects, like your home or the documents that belong to you. But the tools that we use to conduct our daily lives changed. The definition of what is considered private changed, and so did the interpretation of the laws. Take the age of the telephone. When a device became a household item in the early 20th century, the Supreme Court faced a decision. Is a phone call part of what would be considered your house's papers and effects? Or in other words, part of your privacy? The Supreme Court went back and forth on this for 40 years before finally settling on a firm decision. In 1928, the Supreme Court said no. In 1934, they said, well, law enforcement officials are allowed to tap into your phone line only if they won't disseminate the ideas. But in 1967, they said that wiretapping is an invasion into your privacy. They reinterpreted the Fourth Amendment, saying that the law now protected not just places, your bedroom, garage, or kitchen, but people, and what they, in reasonable terms, considered part of their privacy. A year later, Congress defined the rules for getting permission to tap into the phone line. They created a distinction between two types of surveillance. The first type allows surveillance of the content or meaning of a communication. So during a phone call, a conversation itself. For this kind of surveillance, you needed a court-issued warrant. The second only allows monitoring of transactional or addressing information. So within a phone call, there would be phone numbers dialed. For this kind of surveillance, you only needed a simple trap and trace warrant, a document that is much easier to get than a court warrant. On to the era of computers. In 1986, the Electronic Communications Privacy Act expanded wiretap laws to include new electronic communications. It laid out what kinds of information was off limits for law enforcers. That meant any information, text, sound, or data that was transmitted through and stored on electronic communication systems was now protected. Now we are in an era of smartphones, laptops, and surveillance cameras, and we are facing the technological conundrum once more. We've added so many data collecting devices to our daily routine that we no longer know what is and isn't part of our private space. Add 9-11 to the equation and what you have are law enforcement officials that have access to all sorts of data about you in the name of protecting homeland security. When the Patriot Act was signed in 2001, it set new rules for what was and wasn't off-limits to the watchful eyes of law enforcers. Some restrictions were amended. No longer are law enforcement officials required to give notice about searching someone's property, at least not until long after the search had been executed. They can tap into phone calls between an American citizen and a foreign national without a warrant if they were investigating the foreigner. Law enforcers have also been placing GPS trackers on cars, though the Supreme Court recently ruled that this was a violation of privacy rights. What's more important is that law enforcers and private companies have access to troves of electronic data because none of it is explicitly protected under the increasingly outdated 1986 Electronic Communications Privacy Act. Take online data, for example. There are no regulations that protect consumers. Google archives your browsing history, Facebook records your every like and friend, and Sprint collects data about your geolocation. The same applies to visual information. While phone lines and other oral communications are protected under previous acts, video footage is not. 
The list of undefined territories is long. Facial recognition technology, GPS tracking, search terms. But what should and shouldn't be regarded private? Access to information is important to fight crime and terrorism, but some argue that the standards of existing laws are too vague and confusing, creating a system that allows for deliberate invasion of our privacy. The question remains, how do we embrace the proliferation of technology and the security needs of our country while protecting a reasonable right of privacy in a digital age?